Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good teacher, we want you to do whatever we ask of you. Grant that we may sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. These are the words of Peter. These are the words of James and John in this morning's gospel. The other ten disciples we know were very indignant at this request, at this prayer. Because what Peter, what James and John are asking for is that, you know, they um, somehow will, par will be participating in our Lord's reign, what they thought was going to be an earthly reign. And one of them wanted to be the chief of staff and one of them wanted to be the vice president. <laughs> and... The other disciples, again, are angry at such a presumption. And so the Lord it says in this gospel something very beautiful. It says, he called his disciples to himself. This is what a disciple is. Someone that listens and comes when Jesus invites them close to himself. And then he said to his disciples, you know that the rich men... And that those who are supposed to rule over the Gentiles lord it over them. And that their great men exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. For whoever would be the greatest must be the least. And he who would be first must become the slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for men. And so this is... The word for us. This is the operative phrase for us. It shall not be so among you. And this is where we find something that has really um, shown to us, revealed to us, what Christianity is and how powerful it has remained for 2,000 years. Simply because it takes everything that this world values the most and turns it on its head. It turns it on its head. It takes everything that men assume to be the things that are most important, the things that matter most, and it devastates that value system. Because what Christ is teaching us is simply the gospel, that the first will be what? The last. The richest will be the poorest. The, the, the highest will be the lowest. And he who has the greatest authority and power and glory will become the slave of all. And Christ himself not only taught that, it's really remarkable. What did he do? He lived it himself. For the Son of Man has not come to be served, but to give his life as a ransom for many. And therefore, this is why we are disciples of a dead crucified Jew of a dead crucified Jew because he is the one who shows us this path to greatness and this is why we even take a look at this idea that greatness for human beings still today means gaining the greatest rule and the widest authority right the great men are those who lord that authority over them. And the Greek word, I had Father Nick Jonas look it up for me this morning. It's katakiriavusin. Very interesting word. Lord it over them. This is what men admire the most. And yet the Lord says, no, we are going to turn this on its head. And we are going to say that those who are the greatest and most esteemed in the kingdom of God are the least, the last, the lowest, and the poorest. Because this is what we see ultimately where? In the image, the picture of our Lord Jesus Christ, the wisdom word of God who hangs dead upon his cross. And this is where we are going next week as we begin Passion Week with our celebration of Palm Sunday. And this is also why we've spent these 40 days, these holy 40 days of Lent, doing what we do. Coming to all of these services, saying our prayers, reading the scriptures, keeping the fast the best that we can. Because if we are going to truly serve others in the way that we should, 
then we have to cleanse our hearts. One of the most remarkable teachings of the Holy Fathers in our church is by St. Maximus the Confessor. And St. Maximus the Confessor wrote this treatise, which is called The Hundred Chapters of Love, or The Hundred Chapters on Charity. And in this book, which is really not that difficult to read or to study, he says that in order for us to serve, in order for us to love something or love other people, we must see them as they truly are in the eyes of God, in the eyes of Christ. And what he means by this is the following, that we all have inside of us this kind of selfish, egotistic lens, that when we look at someone or we look at something, without even knowing it, we ask ourselves the question, what's in it for me? What's in this relationship for me? What's in it for me? And in order to love and to serve, we have to take the ego out of that equation. And so all of our prayers, and the entire journey of great length for us, is death to self. Death to self in that selfish, egotistic sense, so that we can have a pure heart and learn truly how to serve. And where do we begin that serving? We begin that serving at home with the people that God has placed close, closest to us in our families, to serve them first. I, I love to say this, but one of the things that I often counsel people, sometimes I counsel couples, and you know, when one husband might be having some issues with his family and with his wife, I always say to the, I always say to the husband, I say, what's the best way for you to love your children. And the father will say, well, maybe spend more time with them, or maybe do more things for them. And the answer is no, no, no. The best way for you to love your children is to love your wife first, right? To serve your wife first. That's how you love your children. And um, husbands have to do that. We have to cleanse our hearts so that we can serve in the way that we should. And not only do we this serving in our families, but we also, even more importantly, do this in a parish church, in a community of people who have confessed the same faith, confessed faith in Christ, and that we are here not to get whatever out of it that we possibly can, but so that we can learn how to let go of self and serve each other in the way that we call it, in very simple ways. Yesterday I served the liturgy of the Akakistos, and we were speaking about the holiness of the Mother of God and the Theotokos, and what I tried to emphasize was the fact that Mary did this really great miracle in her life uh, by accepting, consenting to the coming of the Son of God in the flesh through this miraculous conception in her womb. But before she ever did that, she was faithful her whole life to these little mundane things, which all have to do with serving. With all, ha all have to do with serving. And this is, uh, this is the only way for us to gain a path to holiness in our lives. And if we can't do this, then everything that we do in our church is in vain, as St. Paul says. Um, and this is why our Lenten fast and our Lenten prayers, why these things are so important. And finally, there's, there's one more aspect, even of our liturgical prayer, that is rather interesting. And this is that when it comes to power and authority, we have to give it up to Christ. We have to vocalize that surrender. Because whenever we do these prayers, right, these liturgical prayers, what do we say to the Lord? We say, for yours is what? Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the rule. In the original Greek, the word for kingdom and rule and reign are all the same. It's all the same word. And we have to surrender that even over ourselves, 
thinking that we have the right to do whatever we want, to be lord over our own life, to exercise this authority, if we're going to uh, be able to follow Christ in the way that we should. So this morning, uh, two more weeks until we reach our Lord's saving Pascha. And let's remember this curious little story of James and John, how they came to Christ looking to be exalted. They were corrected by Him, by Christ, in a very loving, very loving and gentle way. And through this correction, we are all corrected ourselves in order to understand and to learn what true greatness is in our own lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.